Hi, I'm Stephanie Rauza. Welcome to Nature Sketch Creates Cotton Sketch, a sea otter instructional video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to sketch a sea otter by applying what you learned with your step-by-step -step lesson. You can follow along with this lesson even if you don't have the lesson kit. Make sure to click that like button, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and check out naturesketchcreate.com for future lesson creates. Make sure you have all the materials you need before you go out to sketch. Go sketch an otter in an aquarium, sea otter, coastal habitat, or even an HD video at home. Today, I'm sketching from a composite video of a sea otter for demonstrative purposes. Remember, this is just a sketch. Don't get too caught up with accuracy. Just relax, have fun, and enjoy your time observing nature. Let's get started. So first you wanna figure out where you want the otter on the page. And you can use your final reference image or the painting you did for the step-by-step -step to help you decide that. And you can keep it about similar in size to the image from the step-by-step, -step, this reference image or your final image that you created. The page is the same size, so you know about how big everything needs to be for that otter in order to keep it all in the page. If you want to focus on something different, if you want to blow up the head and just focus on the head, or maybe you just want to focus on three quarters or half of the otter, you can blow it up and make it bigger. This is your sketch. You can do whatever you like to do. And maybe you're sketching an otter at an aquarium and you want it in a different position, so you can do that too. So, I'm sketching from a composite video for demonstrative purposes, and I have it in a similar position to our step-by-step -step just to help you really see how you can apply what you learn with your step-by-step. -step. So I'll keep it about the same size and about the same position on the page as well. So first, I'm going to draw just some shapes with really light pencil marks give me an idea where things are. So just really rough pencil marks, trying really simple shapes, really sketchy. And wherever I see a shape in that otter is what I'm going to draw on here, helping me to put it all together into one shape. So I drew a circle, and kind of a curved rectangle here, and then a little crescent, another oval, and then maybe a triangle. So just using all those little shapes, just roughly putting it in to get an idea of where this otter is before you draw any hard lines. And even though I did this, I got a little close to the edge here. So. That sometimes that happens. That's okay. So I'll probably start on this side since it's close to the edge and then work towards the head and then there might be um, some size difference and then I'll get closer here since I have more space. So follow along and you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to start here with the tail and in my reference image it's wagging pretty hard back and forth in the water. So I have to basically figure out what I want about where I want that tail or I can use just the same thing for my final reference image here. Sometimes when you're drawing from a live animal you have to use what you know about that animal because it moves or it leaves and then you add that in. And I'm just using some darker marks, but not putting in all the details yet. So I'm just kind of putting in the outlines of where things are, making sure the size in relation to the other parts are about the same as the reference. Finalizing what kind of position I have the different parts in. I'm not putting actual toes in here these flippers yet. Yeah. 
just getting it mapped out a bit. Still using some simple shapes, but just defining them a little bit more. Adding in some of these water lines, finding where I want those. See a little bit of the otter's body underneath the water in this reference. So I'm kind of roughly adding that in as well. can also just keep refining this body shape here a little bit. Sometimes I also use some lines in the center here for where there's a curvature of the body there to help see that. Adding in that water line again, there's a little bit of the otter's body showing underneath the water. You can see that it's not reflection in this area, a little bit more reflection up here in the head area. And then there is a reflection on the water here. And just for simplicity, I'm not going to draw in the reflections. See a little bit of that other paw back there. A little, not much. These four paws drawn in a little bit. It's really, really rough. Just making sure the size is right. And if it's not, that's okay too. This is just a sketch. You're just practicing, just getting a quick rough idea of this animal on the page. As you can see, the position of the head is a little different from what I sketched here initially, which is totally fine. It's nice to have different white spaces available for writing in notes and observations, such as your mood, how you're feeling that day, uh, what the weather might be like, why you decided to go sketch, how it made you feel, anything you observed about the animal or anything that was around the animal, maybe even about your sketching so you could write down about how the paint behaves or maybe your water brush had too much water coming out or not enough. Maybe uh, there was some wind and it blew some dirt into your paints, which has happened to me before. Uh, maybe there are a lot of people, you were at an aquarium, just anything that is going on. You can add that to this white space. It's really nice. It's kind of like a little journal for you if you like. Sketching is just a nice, relaxing exercise and should be something that you don't get too caught up in. Just quickly adding it to the page and not worrying too much about what anyone else thinks about it. Just getting some practice. And the more you do it, the better you'll get. I 
So I'm using the nose to determine where the eye is. And it looks as if the eye is right there. And I can change that if I need to. I drew this muzzle first and then added that in. And I can change the curvature with some slightly darker marks. And even take away some of that. And feel free to erase if you need to, just make sure you don't erase too often. I often erase lines if they're going to confuse me later on, but that's it. So I'm not sure which line I actually wanted to keep. And this can also help figure out where this ear is, which I also drew in too dark. And it's always okay to make mistakes. That's what sketching is for, just relaxing, trying things out getting the hang of drawing. It's relaxing and practicing painting. So sketches are never exact, just a study of the animal, just enjoying your time, studying nature and it's the way it looks. So now that I have the basic shape in, I can look at it and redefine a few things to make sure that it's the right size, or I can just start adding some detail. And it's not exactly the right size, of course. Like I said, this is just a sketch, so it's not going to be exactly right. Start defining some of those details a little bit more. So I'm going to start left to right this time since I mapped out the size already. And I like adding in head details first, for some reason. And it's important to mark the direction of the fur. So on this part of the head, it's going one direction, and then the other part of the head is going the other. You can just add a few marks to help you remember that and follow that. Because at any point, your animal could swim away Although otters, if you're watching them in, say, a bay, they tend to just kind of hang out in one spot and not move too much. If you're in an aquarium, they're probably moving a lot more. Maybe not. I'm still redefining that the size of this head a little bit. I think it made a little too small. And I'm going to finish the animal before I add in those watermarks, unless that's something that's hard for you to determine, maybe you want to do those first. simple details. I can kind of make out where this part of the pot is. here because there's a different color of fur. 
and then make sure to add, like I said, I'm adding some marks just to help me know where those lines are, where the fur is going, what the direction is, which is important with the animals. And this is a lot like when you transferred your image. So you're gonna follow and fill in this image with paint. And then define it with some ink lines at the end. And the great thing about that is for sketching, you get the drawing in and you then you can add the paint and then you can add the ink lines and it's fast. If the animal leaves before you're finished, you still have that drawing. You still have something to refer to. But as I mentioned before, it's also helpful to refer to your reference image if needed as well when sketching from a live animal. And I'm not adding a whole lot of different details, just a few. This is still just a sketch. And I'm not being super exact about it. I'm just getting them in quick study of this animal. Next, I'm going to add some of these watermarks, just for reference. It's a lot like our reference image from our step-by-step. -step. And I like this sketch, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to adding some paint. So now I'm going to add some paint. I already revived all of my paints with a little bit of water, and they were pre-mixed from my step-by-step -step lesson, and I'm going to go through this in the same way I did my step-by-step -step and try to do it in the same order might change just a little bit because every animal is a little different. This is meant to help you learn how to apply what you did in your step-by-step -step to create your own sketches. So first, just like with our step-by-step, -step, I'm going to add the sea otter beige and I'm just going to add the really wet light color and I'm going to add it throughout the sea otter. It seems to be a lot lighter on the head of the sea otter, so I might start on the back end and then move my way towards the head. So the paint pigment on my brush will run out by the time I get to the end. Dab your brush off onto your towel before applying it to your painting. just add it over the whole thing. As you can see, it did get lighter as I went along and I had to pick up a little bit more paint because it did get so light. And I didn't test it on my paper, but make sure to do that if you need to. So I clean off my brush and then while this dries, I'll add some of that sea otter blue. I'm just gonna add the really lightest color. Maybe I'll make sure there's enough pigment, it looks super light. A little bit more pigment to it. 
pick up a little bit here, add a little bit more, making it really wet in my palette, which makes it lighter because it has less pigment added to it. Test it out again on my paper, maybe just a tiny bit more. Dab it off on my towel and test it one more time. That looks good. So I don't want this to be too dark, just really light. I'm gonna use some broad strokes. So I'm using the side of my brush instead of the tip. I'm not getting too worried about adding that to the otter. It's just a sketch. And like I said, I do want to leave some white space so I don't want to get too carried away with the blue. I'm going to clean off my brush and add just a little bit more right here around the tail. Now I'm going to clean off my brush and the sea otter body is dry now so I'm just dab it with my finger, make sure it's dry. You don't want to rub your finger across because if it's wet that'll just smudge it. It's also a good way if you want to remove any paint while it is wet you can just kind of swipe at it a little bit like that with either your finger or even um, maybe a q-tip or your clean tip of your towel. It'll still leave a little bit of a mark behind but as you add more paint it'll won't be noticeable. And this is just a sketch, so don't get too carried away with taking your paint off. It's just going to make it imperfectly perfect when you have any kind of mistakes or what you think might be a mistake. So next I'm going to add the otter brown. And I'm going to add it in a lined motion. I'm going to pick up some of that. It looks a little less vibrant. Um, I'm going to roll the tip of my brush on my towel and then I'm also going to check it. It doesn't look super dark. Um, I might want just a little bit more of that paint. And then I'll just take a little bit more of the burnt umber and add it in there. Just a nice little drop. So I keep those paints because sometimes they're not as vibrant when you arrive them. Check that out. That looks a bit better. And I'm going to use it to add it to those darker areas in the otter. So I'll actually look at the otter I'm painting, kind of add it in in a line motion. And where I need to just kind of painting it in. And you apply this kind of like you do with a crayon or a marker. Just adding it in. have hair that's a little bit more fine so you can't see it quite as well so I'm just gonna paint right over those spaces and most of them are pretty dark so I'm not gonna reserve too much of that light color I'm also going to add it just kind of without the hair lines of course underneath the water here you can see a little bit of that otter's body. And lastly, just to the tail, which is mostly underwater, so add that there. Clean off my brush. Then I'm going to add a little bit more of the blue color. This is slightly drier, more concentrated color. Test it out. And I'm going to add it in preserving some of this lighter color underneath, of course, and using my lines I already drew in as a guide. Let's 
using broad strokes again and it's a little darker around the otter's body. I'm just gonna paint right over that brown that I just did. It's a little wet. I probably should have waited for it to dry back out. Impatient, so I'm just gonna do it. It's totally fine. I wanna keep it consistent. Paint whenever you need it. And don't worry about being too exact. Just, just a sketch. Just get it in and relax. Enjoy the process. Clean off your brush. And then I'm going to add some of this lighter otter brown. Dab it off on my towel and check it out to see if it's the right color. I like that. I'm having a little bit of the dark colors bleeding into that and that's fine. Let's check it again. Looks good. And I'm just going to add it in these areas that are a little darker, like in the head here. My brush is releasing a lot of water. Sometimes you can take the water brush if it's too full it can release too much water, so it's okay to make any kind of mistakes. Uh, pick that up a little bit, dab it off on my towel, and then get started again. Adding in those little hair lines here, and it is going to be a little less lined since this water brush I'm using is releasing still quite a bit of water but I think it's making it look nice. So it's imperfectly perfect. It's leaving this unexpected effect to my image. And I'm just adding it throughout sparingly just to add a little bit more of the lighter color rather than the darker brown. Clean off my brush and add a little bit more of the blue again. I'm gonna make it just a little bit darker, oh, super dark. That's pretty good. And mix it up a little more. Dab it off on my towel and then add it in sparingly in those darker parts of the water. is pretty dry so I'm going to go ahead and add the next color the otter deep brown and pick up a little bit of that dab it on my towel and then test it out it's pretty good my water brush is also releasing a lot of water still so I'm going to roll that slightly faulty equipment but it's creating a fun effect anyway so it's fine with that and I did add a little bit more water to that accidentally as well. So I'm just going to add this color throughout where I see it in the otter in my reference and I'm bleeding into the water there a little bit because I'm getting close to the edge. So maybe I'll work on the paws first, close to that wet water area. I put the blue color. Oh, it's not going to be super lined, and I like the way it looks. It's the fun thing about watercolor. 
and do something a little bit unexpected every time. Line motion or just kind of filling in the space, depending if there's more fur shining. Making sure to preserve some of that color underneath as well in the places where I see that happening in my reference. should be very similar to the dark areas in your step-by-step -step, unless your otters are a different color, which could be. And I feel like it could get a little bit darker, so it feels fairly dry, so I'm going to go through and add a little bit more in some of those areas. Just one more time. Again, I'm just adding this to the areas I see that might be really dark. Just adding a little bit more dimension by adding this one more layer of color compared to our step by step. And it kind of happened, nice little happy mistake with the adding the water and having the brush hold too much water made it lighter, so I needed to add another layer. Next, I'm going to add a little bit more of the blue color just to deepen some of that contrast. I add a little bit less. So, some thinner lines, not quite as broad stroke lines. And I'm going to clean off my brush. And then I'm going to add some of this gold color. You can see on reference that there are some places that have a little bit more of a gold shine to them to just help this image pop a little bit, adding it sparingly, giving it a little bit more. Just a little bit, I mean, it might have gotten a little heavy handed in the face. What I can do is I just take my brush when it's clean, just pick some of that color up, and the brush keeps picking up. Really, my brush keeps releasing too much water, so I'm gonna take a little clean edge of my towel and dab it right over that just to pick up some of that. I think it looks good though. And I'm going to look at it and kind of add just a tiny bit more to it. There's a little bit of this lighter color right here. I think that looks a little better and then around the base here as well, where I put that gold color and kind of it a little bit more. I'm going to add a little bit of this darker blue color. A little wet, so I probably should have waited a little longer. When I'm out sketching in the fields, I often get impatient, so it's okay. Let that paint do what it wants to do, and look a little bit different. See how it behaves a little different on the page. brush and move on to adding ink lines when this is dry. So last thing I'm going to add some ink lines 
touch this and it's pretty dry. Use the smallest micron, just like in our step-by-step, -step, to redraw the lines that I added initially and redefine any lines that I think might be a little off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go throughout and draw those in. And I'll leave some of these lines out that just help me determine where things are. And mostly just drawing in the lines that I see in the otter. reference that I have. So I won't redraw the lines that are guidelines. And when I redraw some of the lines, the hair lines, I'm going to add in some kind of squiggly lines instead of straight lines. Give a little more texture. I'm not being exact about any of this, it's just a sketch. And you can go throughout and just redefine those lines. One thing I would like to do that I always do is add the common name and scientific name. So I'm going to go ahead and write that in and then use the 0055 micron. Next I'm going to use the 01 black micron to add some thicker lines that I see in my auto reference just like we did with the step by step. So is anything that might be just a little thicker but not super thick. Anything that needs just a little bit more defining than that thin 01 micron line, but not a lot. This is, yeah, also are going to add those 08 micron lines. That was good for some hairlines definition. Some of these finer lines here. If you didn't draw in the eye yet, that would be a great one to do. Part of the nose here. I'm going to kind of add that in because the top of the nose looks a little bit dark and the bottom has a lighter color. Kind of to define that. There's lighter lines that are in here. And you can go back and use these other pens and add more watercolor at any time, but try not to do it too much. It's just a sketch. So next I'm going to add the 08 black micron lines, and this will just help define some spaces and let things pop. So we want to keep a little bit of variety in your line thickness. So. This is going to go in the dark areas and also in areas where you want something to stand out a little bit more. Maybe you want some of this otter's body to stand out from the water a little bit more. So I'm going to draw that edge in. And I really would like it to stand out from this water a bit more, so I'm going to draw that edge in. And like with our step-by-step, -step, you might even add, you gotta be careful not to smudge this ink when it's wet, moving my hand around. Um, like with our step-by-step, -step, you might just add a thicker line in parts of this, some double line, just to really differentiate it from the water there. Great job observing your world. Keep practicing.
Make sure to check out the Nature Sketch Create website for future lesson creates and to sign up for our newsletter for regular updates.